you've said that I love to compete. That's the essence of, of who I am. What did you mean by that? I love to compete. Whatever it is, we could be, you and I could be playing cards right now and just want to kick your butt. You'd want to win. Oh, no, I want to kick your butt. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're in a tournament, that's what you're looking to do. Yeah. Kick some butt. Yeah. But you do it with such a nice smile. These guys are the best in the world. And I'm very lucky to have that opportunity to try and compete against the best in the world. And that's a rush. For Tiger, the greater the pressure, the bigger the rush. No one handles the stress of competition better. How do you explain that? I think it's just concentration. I mean, your concentration is so high and so keen because all this pressure is on you. Your senses are more heightened. Everything seems to flow better. It's... It's a great feeling. When he's in that zone, it can be so unnerving that his opponents sometimes self-destruct. You're aware of that intimidation that you have? I'm aware if I'm playing at my best, I'm tough to beat. And I enjoy that. So when you go out, do you expect to dominate? Do you expect to win? I expect to win, yes. Always. Every time? Yes. It's just a belief you have to have. I mean, as an athlete, as a competitor, you have to have that belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. And what separates the great from those who are just very good? Able to repeat it again and again and again. For Tiger, practice is the key, and his work ethic is legendary. He's up at dawn and can stay out on the course for as long as 14 hours hitting balls again and again and again, off the tee, out of the sand, or on the green. It's a never-ending quest for perfection. You never lose that passion to compete and live a, live a dream, and I'm able to do that. It's almost like it's an obsession. It is. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to golf. It's an addiction that started when Tiger was so young, it's become the stuff of legend. He was born Eldrick Woods in Cypress, California in 1975. His father, Earl, said Tiger was swinging a golf club at nine months before he could walk. By three, his extraordinary talent was featured on the Mike Douglas Show, where he and Bob Hope had a putting contest. You got any money? <laughs> From the beginning, Earl Woods guided, nurtured, managed, and inspired his child prodigy. Earl, who served as a Green Beret in Vietnam, also nicknamed him Tiger after a buddy, a lieutenant colonel in the South Vietnamese Army, who Earl said saved his life. Today at 74, Earl Woods is battling cancer and is confined to his home. Your father played a big role in, in shaping you for this. Too. A tremendous, tremendous role. He was my best friend. And, you know, having your best friend be your father is a very unique thing. If Earl was coach, his mother, Coltita, was the disciplinarian and official scorekeeper. Born in Thailand, raised a Buddhist, she married Earl while working as a secretary in the U.S. Army office in Bangkok. My dad, ex-Green Beret, he thinks he's this tough guy. My dad's was softy. Mom was the one I was always afraid of. You've said that she gave you that competitive drive and that she also gave you a killer instinct. What would you mean by you that? You have no idea how competitive my mom is. She would watch me compete, and you could, you know, you could see her over there on the side, and she'd be living every moment, I mean, die on every shot. What about that step on their throats, fight to the death, show no mercy? That's a spot you have to. No matter how close friend you are, you must kill that person. <laughs> when it's over, you can check in, be friend again. Was she tough on you? At times, yeah. She was very strict. She said, if I ever crossed the boundaries that she set, there was always consequences. And did you cross them? Oh, yeah. Well, you always got to test it, you know, any kid. You always <laughs> got to see what the boundaries are. And hey, what were the consequences? Um, I wouldn't be able to sit for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Hang out with Tiger on the driving range as we did one windy day and you begin to appreciate the grace and fluidity of his swing and the athleticism he brings to the game. He's sculpted his body putting on 25 pounds of muscle since he turned pro. 
Why is the golf swing so difficult if you make it look so easy? So many moving parts. Your whole body's moving, and this ball is not moving. It's standing still laughing at you. I really want to hit that guy out there. <laughs> that guy was our cameraman, and Tiger left no doubt that most of the time he can put the ball where he wants. It's having fun. What we used to do was play hacky sack. One of the fun things Tiger can do with a golf ball became famous in a Nike commercial. Some people said that that was done with computers. And... It's actually pretty funny. And I saw Andre Agassi catch a ball on a tennis racket. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Could I do that with a golf ball? <laughs> so I tried it and finally learned how to do it. And when did you try to hit it? Uh, not too long after that. <laughs> That'd be the best shot of my career. <laughs>